Hi folks, Chris Martin here. Welcome to a very special edition of Diplomacy Academy. Right now, while I'm recording this, everybody is staying at home due to the coronavirus crisis. That means nobody's traveling to play diplomacy. And so events that have been going on for 30 plus years are having to be canceled. Well, David Hood, who runs DixieCon, has decided that he won't abide by that and he's going to run a virtual DixieCon in its stead. So Saturday morning, there'll be rounds of diplomacy and maybe staggered starts due to the various time zones. And then Saturday evening, there'll be a championship round with a break in between for some Carolina barbecue. You can check out all the details about this as they develop on the Facebook page for Virtual DixieCon 34. To help run this online tournament, David Hood's going to be using Backstabber my favorite online platforms for playing diplomacy. It's been used for many years now on the groups that I've kind of started and run through the Cisco WebEx Teams platform. It's been used by Chicago recently for some of their online games that they've had to hold since their face-to-face -face games have had to be canceled. And I was watching a live stream of one of those online games, and I saw twice in two turns a player had made a very common easily correctable error using Backstabber. Now, Backstabber is a great platform, but because it's got a point and click interface, it can be a little finicky, especially if you're used to writing your orders down and throwing them in a box or using one of the judges and typing your orders in. So I thought that to help get this virtual DixieCon to go smoothly, I would put together a little video about how to use Backstabber, how to get into a game, how to write some orders, how to get your adjudications done. So uh, the first thing you got to know is Backstabber requires you to have a Gmail account. That's how they do account authorization. So you can just go ahead and click sign in and it'll take you there to sign in with Google and you can choose which Google account you want to sign in with. For me, that's this one. And once it's detected that you're you, boom, you'll be in and you'll be ready to get started. Joining a game on Backstabber is a simple process. Open up the games currently forming and you will find the names of all of the games that are currently forming. If you've been invited to a specific game, you'll be able to see that there. And once you're ready to find the one that you've got, go ahead and click on it. And it will take you to this page with a really simple button that says join this game. You've got the name of the game and who the GM is and who created the game. Basically, all of the information you want about this is here. Once you click the join game button, you'll be in that game. So this is your map of diplomacy with the units in their starting positions. The large circles are armies, and the triangles are fleets. On this page, you're going to see all of the orders over on the right-hand side, and on the bottom, the buttons that you can click for the various hold, move, convoy, and support orders. Let's go ahead and enter some orders for England. Move orders are easy, but you have to be precise. Select the unit you want to move, any, you've got some options here, then the destination. That's a move order. Click on London, click on the North Sea. You got a move order. Click on Liverpool, click on Yorkshire. Those are moves, very simple. But you have to be precise. These are small spaces, so always look at the text and double check your orders. Unlike other systems, Backstabber will not check your orders for you and let you know that you've selected something illegal. If you click a space and a destination that won't work, those orders will fail. Let me quickly fill in some more orders. I'm doing this with a mouse and a keyboard, but the same thing really applies if you were doing it with a phone and your fingers. Now, let's pause right here as we get to a support order. Anytime you want to issue an order that is more than simply a move, you're going to need to use either a keyboard shortcut or the buttons at the bottom of the screen, the hold, move, convoy, and support button. You're always going to begin by selecting the unit that you want to take the action. So, in this case, Paris. Then you have to get the order of operations right. You know that it's by default a move. You click Paris to Burgundy, Paris would be ordered to move to Burgundy. So, you don't want that. You want to click on the support button, then the unit that you want to support, and then the destination where that unit is going. Paris supports Marseille to Burgundy. Paris, the support button, Marseille, Burgundy. And double check to make sure you got your orders right. I can't stress this enough. 
you're going to click on things you didn't mean to click on. You're going to click on them in the wrong order. Go ahead and double check your orders. All right, let me build out the rest of this map here. A couple things to notice as I'm building this out. Your home centers are colored and square. The non-home supply centers that you're going to be capturing are marked with circles. When you have occupied them for a fall turn and they become yours, they will change to your color so you can help track, you know, who owns what over the course of the game using that. So we got all the orders in. When we're ready to go, we'll go ahead and click on Submit Orders. When we go ahead and click Submit Orders, the game state in the sandbox is just going to change. Um, that's not super useful. So we'll go back into the map and we'll click on Spring where it will tell us what happened. And here you'll see all those arrows and all of the orders that have been written out on the right hand side that will show you what happened. You'll notice that moves that failed have red arrows and moves that succeeded have black arrows. And once we got all that figured out, we can go ahead and go back and take a look at the next turn. I'm just going to build this out real quick here, put in a bunch of moves that kind of amuse me. Uh, nothing new going on here, but I am going to give us a pause one second here when we get to a convoy. A convoy order works just like a support order. You click the fleet that's doing the convoy, the convoy button, and then the unit you want and the unit you want it to go to. So in this case, uh, we're going to go ahead and send Yorkshire to London by way of convoy. Um, obviously, it could just walk there. We just went ahead and put that convoy in there for amusement's sake. Um, there is a legitimate tactical reason for doing that, but not when you follow it up as I do here with moving the Norwegian Sea. So that's how you write a convoy order. Click on the fleet that's riding the convoy. Click on the convoy button. Then the army that's moving and the destination of the. Okay, I'm just going to build this out real quick. Now, when we get to a support to hold order, works a little differently. Click on Ukraine. Click on the support button, then click on SEV, and click on SEV again, because that's how you write a hold order, is the unit is selected, and then you select the territory that it's already in to indicate that it's holding. So Ukraine supports SEV to hold, and if SEV was going to hold, it would just SEV, and then click SEV again, and you'll get a hold order. That's a fairly common misorder. Again, always double check your orders. The classic mistake here is to think you have finished before you've clicked the hold. So Ukraine supports SEV, you think, and then, okay, now I will write the order for something else, and you go ahead and click on St. Petersburg or Grofbotny or something, and you've really supported the unit to move someplace that you didn't want it to. You wanted to write a support to hold. So let's go ahead and take a look at the consequences of these orders. Again, you see red are failed orders. Black are good orders. In Ukraine, you see a legitimate support order. In the North Sea, you see a legitimate convoy, and the convoy is succeeded, even though Yorkshire didn't need to take that path, and the move from Yorkshire fails. Um, in Seb, you'll see a failed support order, because Bulgaria didn't move to Romania. Let's look at winter. So, once we go into winter, you're going to see these radio buttons. You can click on them, you can click on the territory. Either way, you'll see what your adjustments are written on the screen. You only get as many builds as you're entitled to, no matter how many buttons you click. So figure out how many you want. Each player is only going to see their own. Obviously, you're not going to know how many the other people have unless you go in and look at the information for that. Uh, once you've gotten all of the builds selected, submit your orders. Once everybody's got their orders submitted, you'll move into the next turn. Let's go ahead and look at that. Spring of 1902, whole thing starts all over again. You can see that supply centers, which have changed hands, like Vienna, Norway, and Holland, have changed colors to reflect their new owners. And the supply centers that are still neutral, like Bulgaria, Tunis, Portugal, Spain, Sweden, and Belgium, are still white. Those will change once they're claimed. I want to look at two very special cases where I've seen mistakes made on a regular basis before we finish up on orders. Two spaces on the board have a real finicky problem with the backstabber interface. You really got to be aware of them. And that's Spain, with the north coast and south coast, and Bulgaria, whether you're coming from Greece and moving to the south coast, or Constantinople and coming to the you know south coast, east coast, or Romania. 
Either way, you have to be super careful because you can misclick on these very easily. Romania to Bulgaria South Coast is a legitimate order that it will let you write, but it won't work. And same thing with Greece to Bulgaria East Coast. Now, Middle Atlantic Ocean can go there. Now, you see with Gascony, uh, the move to Spain, you don't need to specify a coast, of course. However, when you start looking at support orders, that's when you really have to be careful because you select the move and you set up a, a thing that would be a bounce, right? Then you add in Serbia and you say, hey, I'm going to support that move of Greece to Bulgaria, but you click the wrong coast. So even though you got the fleet order right, you've got the army support order wrong. And that, when the adjudication comes, is not going to work. Same thing with the move to Spain. If you specify the wrong coast for the support order, then your support is invalid. Now, that is different than in uh, most face-to-face -face adjudications and many other systems where the army doesn't have to specify which coast it's going to. Because in the system you are required to specify a coast, if you get it wrong, it's going to be wrong. So let's go look at the adjudications here. So you'll see that we should get a supportive move of Greece into Bulgaria. But look, it didn't work. Uh, we'll go back and, and look at the orders to see why not. But it's exactly what we said. The support is a legitimate order. You see that it's got the, the black lines that say this is a legitimately, goodly, well-written order. But it says it's going to the wrong coast. So you don't have that support. I saw this happen twice in two turns on uh, the games that Chicago played a couple weeks ago uh, online, and it really made a big difference because you know, Turkey benefited from that by Austria not kicking them out of Bulgaria twice in two turns. So when you're playing on a backstabber, you just kind of know where the finicky bits are. That's one of them. Be super careful about where you're clicking. Make sure you get it right, and double-check your orders in the written section. That brings us to the end of another Diplomacy Academy. It's been a long time, 18 months since the last one. And uh, to those of you who've been out there waiting and watching and hoping for something that was maybe a little more tactical or uh, had more advice about how to play Diplomacy, apologies. I have actually started three other videos in the last 18 months, but just haven't found the heart to finish them. After the World Championships in 2018, which was fantastic, had a really good time, I got really burnt out. And I took an entire year off. I didn't play diplomacy at all for the better part of a year. And in 2020, I kind of committed to try and find my mojo. I went to a tournament in Vancouver run by Chris Brand. Excellent event. Highly recommend. And after that, started a video. I had some ideas about, you know, what would make a good video, but just couldn't find the fun in it. It's, uh, it's a lot of work putting these together. So it was when David Hood announced that he was canceling DixieCon and moving it to virtual that I thought, well, here's an opportunity for me to do something and give back a little something to somebody who's been really important to me. So thank David Hood for this edition of Diplomacy Academy, and uh, if I can keep that mojo going, I'll get another one out here in a little bit. Until next time, I'm Chris Martin, and I'll stab you soon.